we are a church that has had an extermination order issued against us. That is unprecedented in the history of this God-fearing nation. For many Latter-day Saints, the persecution of the church proves it to be true. And the extermination order of Missouri Governor Boggs stands as the prime example. The reality is that the Mormons first threatened non-Mormons with extermination in Missouri. Months before Governor Boggs' order, first counselor of the first presidency, Sidney Rigdon publicly declared, We take God and all the holy angels to witness this day, that we warn all men in the name of Jesus Christ to come on us no more forever. For from this hour we will bear it no more. Our rights shall no more be trampled on with impunity. The man or the set of men who attempts it does so at the expense of their lives. And that mob that comes on us to disturb us, it shall be between us and them a war of extermination. For we will follow them till the last drop of their blood is spilled, or else they will have to exterminate us. For we will carry the seat of war to their own houses and their own families, and one party or the other shall be utterly destroyed. Remember it then, all men. The saints did not always use wisdom. They move into this new area. They, they uh, find people living there who don't share their values and, and their uh, way of living. And they, and they make comments uh, like this. Well, we're moving in here. We're the people of God. We're the chosen people. This land has been given to us as our land, a promised land. Uh, you may stay here, but eventually this will be our property. The LDS were doing more than this. Remember, this is at the same time that Apostle Parley Pratt was publicly saying that God would destroy all the non-Mormons on this continent within 50 years, and that most would be destroyed in 5 to 10 years. Now Sidney Rigdon, the second highest leader of the Mormon church, is threatening non-Mormons with a war of extermination. There were skirmishes, but the first actual battle of the Missouri War began with a preemptive strike by the Mormons. After an extended siege of the Latter-day Saints settlement of DeWitt, Carroll County, and the expulsion of the Saints, anti-Mormon forces moved north toward the Latter-day Saints settlements in Davis County. Joseph Smith called for a preemptive strike against what were believed to be centers of anti-Mormon mobs in that county. The notion that the Mormons had become aggressors was a key development in the overall Missouri conflict and led to the extermination order that was issued by Governor Lilburn Boggs. And having been threatened by the Mormons with a war of extermination, Governor Boggs responded with the same language. The order was issued on October 27th, and by November 1st, the Missouri War ended with the Mormon surrender. The Missouri War did cost the lives of 20 Latter-day Saints, three at Crooked Creek and 17 at Hans Mill, but it also cost the lives of non-Mormons. What is generally ignored is that Latter-day Saints have killed far more non-Mormons in the name of religion than non-Mormons have killed LDS in the name of religion. As awful as these deaths of 20 people were in the 19th century, they need to be compared with the more than 120 men, women, and children killed in one day by Latter-day Saints at the Mountain Meadows Massacre. President Buchanan had sent an army to remove Brigham Young as governor of the Utah Territory. Mormon attacks on their supply wagons delayed the army's arrival. It was into this situation that a wagon train arrived in Salt Lake on its way to California. Most of the settlers were from Arkansas, where a jury had just acquitted a jealous husband of killing Parley Pratt. Rumors began to circulate that some of the wagon train were boasting of having killed Joseph Smith. Behind all the rumors are incontrovertible facts. Indians attacked the wagon train but were fought off. Indians! Then the Mormons joined with the Indians and pinned them down at Mountain Meadows. With their water and ammunition running low, the settlers met with the Mormons under a flag of truce on September 11, 1857. The Mormons promised to lead them to safety if they would lay down their arms. Ha <laughs> ha 
us out of duty. Mormons are quick to claim that there is nothing to prove that Brigham Young ordered the massacre. Yet we know that he told the Indians they could steal the cattle before the wagon train was ever attacked. John D. Lee, who led the massacre, was Young's adopted son and member of the Council of Fifty. When the government troops arrived in Utah and heard rumors about a massacre, Brigham Young lied and blamed the Indians. When government troops went to Mountain Meadows to investigate, they found bones scattered all about. They gathered the bones together and covered them with a heap of stones. Later, when Brigham Young was traveling through the area, he saw the monument. And according to Dudley Levitt, I was with a group of elders that went out with President Young to visit the spot in the spring of 61. The soldiers had put up a monument, and on top of that, a wooden cross, with the words burned into it, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Brother Brigham read that to himself and studied it for a while, and then he read it out loud. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I have repaid. He didn't say another word. He didn't give an order. He just lifted his right arm to the square, and in five minutes there wasn't one stone left upon another. He didn't have to tell us what he wanted done. We understood. Even according to the journal of future prophet Wilford Woodruff, when he saw the monument, Young said, It should be vengeance is mine, and I have taken a little. Regardless of Brigham's specific role before the massacre, he celebrated it and lied to government officials, blaming it all on the Indians. Some Latter-day Saints believe the persecution of the church in Missouri proves that it's true. If 20 Latter-day Saints dead in the Missouri War proves the LDS church true, then what do more than 120 men, women, and children killed in cold blood by Latter-day Saints prove? These murders were done by Mormons in the name of Mormonism and covered up by your prophet. Twenty years after Mountain Meadows, John D. Lee was executed for leading the massacre, but no one else was ever prosecuted. We call you to judge all these things by your own words. It is my prayer that you will seek the truth earnestly and unceasingly, that you will yearn to drink from the fount of all truth, whose waters are pure and sweet, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. As awful as the lies of the LDS Church are, far worse is that it has proclaimed a different God and different gospel from what God has given us in the Bible. They convince you that if Mormonism isn't true, nothing is. They have taught you that the Bible has been corrupted, mistranslated, and robbed of many plain and precious truths. They rip passages out of context and claim the Bible contradicts itself. They claim there are over 45,000 different denominations because the Bible is so confusing. The Bible was a powerful book, but Revelation trumps the Bible. Joseph felt that he had the authority to actually change the words of the Bible by force of his own revelation. He added long passages uh, coming through Revelation too. So for Mormons in his time and today, uh, the revelation is what they heed above all. We do not have the time to address all these lies in this short video. We would be happy to address any of your questions. But for now, our plea is simple. Take the Bible and read it for yourself. In it, you will find that it presents a very different God and a very different gospel.